Hi, this is John Guidry. We're going to demo a bunch of uh, rare and unreleased CC40 hardware today. Um, one of the first things um, that I wanted to show you here is actually this. This is the CC40 Plus. This was never ever released. Um, the difference between this and a regular TI CC40 is actually this uh, DB9 jack in the back of the unit here. And this DB9 jack is uh, a cassette port. So you got a, I got a standard uh, run-of-the-mill TI cassette cable here, and uh, I'll show you a little bit how that works. Um, this prototype unit that I got, I purchased from somebody in Europe off of eBay, and I believe it only had 6K of RAM, and I had a 32K um, cartridge here. I did a call admem, and kind of ironically, I only got 18K of memory when I do a, a print-free memory. But um, this is the prototype CC40. Great operational condition, no issues with it. You notice the only thing different is it doesn't have the front plastic protecting the uh, bezel, I mean the, um, the LCD in front. Um, second rare thing that we're going to show you, and this is all hooked up and operational, this thing is called a quick disk. Um, this quick disk device I purchased from Michael Becker uh, probably a year or two ago. And uh, this is a 2.8 inch disc. You know, looks kind of weird. You know, there's not that many of these things uh, hanging around. Most of them were in use by uh, MIDI keyboards and by um, uh, word processing units. So I've actually got a directory printed out for my uh, quick disc here. And uh, another uh, thing we have hooked up to the CC40 is this printer plotter. And uh, these things were notoriously bad for a couple reasons. Number one, the gears kept breaking in them. Uh, so you would have to get a new gear, which which they're becoming really hard to find, if not next to impossible. And um, inside you'd have uh, three different colors worth of uh, printer pens. You know, some of some of you might uh, remember the old Radio Shack plotters, TRS-80 plotters, Atari plotters, and stuff from the day. They all use the same kind of Alps printer mechanism, and they all had uh, black, blue, uh, green, and red printer um, pens in them. And uh, if you could see right here, and actually I can open this up here, the the printer uh, pins are in here, and they turn based upon what the uh, printer demands uh, at a certain time. You know, black, blue, whatever. And it's very important. These are all alcohol-based inks, so you know we got to put them back in the <laughs> the container when I'm done with them. So I've got this particular one that I just uh, emptied here, and uh, this is kind of some interesting. Uh, examples of what this printer plotter could do. Um, you know, we've got a little bar grapher program in the lower left hand corner, like a sign program here, and a uh, multi-plotter, um, you know, XY axis uh, plotter here, you know, and it looks like it's plotting some kind of functions. Um, so what we'll do here is uh, we'll do a couple things. Um, we're going to we're gonna load a program off of the quick disk. Now everything in TI world has a device number and uh, the quick disk is actually device number eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a program called bar graph. Oops. Let me retype that again here. It doesn't seem to have taken bar graph er. Maybe that's why. And you hear the quick disk device clicking. And it should give me the cursor back here. There we go. So let's go ahead and run it. Now this actually gives you a whole bunch of different um, bar graphs on the printer. So let's put one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, and one in for our data sets, and we're going to e hit E to end. And we're going to watch the printer plotter here. It's going to print the data set that I just put in, which is kind of cool. You printed it at whatever ink um, pen was just selected, which was the, um, you know, which which the blue one. And so, um, just to kind of give you an idea, I saved some of these programs here to tape and. Uh, <laughs> Those of you who had the TI-994A, this is going to sound really familiar. I'm going to... 
So I'm going to rewind this here and get it back to the point. We're going to load it. We're going to load it on the CC40 here. So let me get it back to the point where the beginning is. We're going to plug the uh, the jack back in here, and we're going to the cassette. Ironically, is device number one. It took me a while to find it, but um, we're going to load one dot, and we're going to load one dot headline, which is I think is what it calls itself. I'm not sure if I need the the file name, but It'll say position tape, then press enter. So press play, press play, then press enter. And it's going to sit there, you know, with the I.O. on it. And so by now, it's going to start reading it. So, you know, hopefully it'll read without any kind of issues. Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't want to read. This thing's very picky about volume levels and such. So I'm just going to go ahead and load it off of the um, the quick disk, which I happen to have laying around. So 8 dot headline. So we're going to so we're going to load that off of here. The quick disk is going to be busy here. So we're gonna run it. It's gonna say inner top line, so we'll put high and bottom line optional, we'll put YouTube. And oh one I think it's blue. As you can see, this thing's not very loud at all. And here's our hi YouTube. <laughs> so uh, to sum up, that was a very quick demonstration of the CC40 printer plotter, which acts as device number 10. The um, the CC40 Plus with cassette interface, and I'm sorry I couldn't get it to work the first time, but I might need to tweak a little the volume a little bit more. Um, the uh, CC40 Quick Disc, which is device number eight, and just a plain Jane cassette recorder to, to load and save stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this, and um, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or send me in the message. Thank you. Hi, this is John Gidry. I'm going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to go ahead and try to load a program off of cassette one more time. I think I've got the volume levels um, adjusted properly on the CC40 Plus here, so we're going to do an old one dot and uh, hit enter and it's going to tell us to position the tape and press enter so that's done it says press play then press enter okay so play enter and it's going to sit here hopefully and it's going to say reading and then when it's done um, let's see what happens here it shouldn't take that long for it to uh, go ahead and read this tape it sounds like it's using the same variant of uh, encoding there we go it says reading same variant of encoding as the regular TI uh, cassette uh, recorder. It sounds like there's a couple couple more bit stanzas at the beginning. I'd be kind of curious to see what those are. You know, if I if I can find somebody that could actually read the encoding. Uh, but the rest of the data stream sounds fine. And then there's actually a pause at the end where it makes the same initial tone and it makes a little short burst of data at the very end. I'm guessing to say that it's done. Yep. Press stop. Then press enter. And then um, it will do, we'll do a run here. And uh, there's our program. So sorry I couldn't get it to work the first time, but I'm tacking this on the end here, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it.